Today we're looking at the DJI Mini 4 Pro, um, the latest and the one of the smallest additions to the range of the drones and they have available on their um, DJI website. So I'm going to be looking at the quality, um, how everything looks, what's in the box and so on. So let's get right into it. What we have here is the DJI Mini 4 Pro uh, Fly Mode Combo, uh, which I'm uh, really I'm glad to receive. I had it in a box for uh, three days. It was really difficult not to be tempted to open it, uh, but I was looking forward to make this video and I kept it especially for you. So hopefully you're gonna get enough information about what's in the box, how is everything looking in terms of the quality and whether it's worth it to buy it. I am not a person who previously owned a drone. I'm a first time buyer, first time to use. So I'm not really sure what to expect. Um, I've, um, you know, I've, I flew a couple of toys drones, but they're completely different. There's so much more technology in here um, that helps you to fly it and make the, the, the flying um, experience much more enjoyable. So hopefully that's gonna help me out when I'm gonna take it out for the first uh, flight outside. But yeah, so what we have here. So this is, this is the DJI Mini 4 Pro, like I mentioned. It's uh, ultra light, it's below 249 grams. Um, this is apparently labeled and sitting in a category of C0, which means you can fly it in, in towns and cities and, um, and there shouldn't be really a problem of using it pretty much anywhere you want. But you need to make sure that you read and comply with all the regulations available um, because you don't want to be uh, in prison or you know you know um, you don't want to get in trouble while you're enjoying your flight outside and so on so make sure you read all about it and where and how you can use it and what are the rules um, I know that the general rule is that you cannot fly over 120 meters and you have to have your drone in the line of sight in the line of sight uh, but there are some exceptions depending on the country and so on so please make sure that you um, read all of those before you attempt. And from my experience, what I'm going to be doing after find out about the operator ID, the flyer ID and so on, I'm going to be definitely applying for all of that, do all the tests, even though they're not required, and also potentially getting the insurance because for the drone in this category, it's pretty cheap. You can get something from like 30 pounds um, onward, depending how and when you're going to be using it. And yeah, so um, what we have here. So this is the fly mode combo. Um, this drone comes in with three batteries um, um, and a case, a, the, um, the, the, the screen with the, sorry, the remote with the screen and a, and a case for it. Now, we, I also have here the ND filters. They come separately. You have to order them separately and there's recommended card of 128 gigabytes um, from DJI as well. Now, this has came to me from the JD.com store. Um, they are the China's largest um, retailer and largest uh, online retailer in the world as well and um, it took about um, two to three weeks to arrive uh, but it's finally here so let's have a look um, what we have here so it's, it's ultra light uh, omnidirectional um, uh, active obstacle sensing so if you're going outside if you may be in the forest or maybe there's something on obstacle um, that you want to avoid this drone should be able to detect it and you, in the settings you should be able either to apply it to avoid it or stop immediately uh, 4k at 100 frames per second hdr uh, 48 megapixel so there's you know bunch of technology um jump packed into this uh, mighty little bird but like i said i am newbie to this i don't know what half of it means so at the moment what i'm going to be doing is just looking at the quality and how satisfying i am with what's in the box so here we are, um, I took the liberty to unpack it quickly. So this case looks very sturdy and I also think that it's gonna be waterproof because the zippers are all L L tight. Um, the stitches are well finished and there is a pocket in front which you can put a couple of, uh, I guess a couple of cables, something necessary, maybe your extra ND filters or a wipe that, that you want and so on. Uh, it comes with a nice little strap here so you can put it over your shoulder. So you're not gonna drop it and so on. And let's yeah, let's let's see what's inside. Okay, interesting. So I already took some of the uh, foil, some packaging out. I think that would be unnecessary. Uh, but that's exactly how it's packed in the in the uh, in the in the in the in the bag when you when it arrives. So what you have inside here. Let me just move it over here so you can see. So there is a. A uh, bunch of propellers, they're all marked with A and B 
it, it's very important to know which one you, uh, when you replace them, to put them in the right places. They um, marked uh, to make sure you put them in the right place. Otherwise, that's going to be affecting your flight. Um, USB-C to USB-C cable, uh, another plethora, so that's pretty good. I believe that the uh, Fly More combo has a little bit more of those parts. Um, that is the, the manual, and there's also PDF available on, on DJI website and so on, and then USB-A to USB-C that I believe is for the uh, docking station because it's a two-way docking station, so you can either charge your batteries or out of the batteries you can charge your devices, so like your phone, maybe your remote if you want and so on. And then uh, and a screwdriver for replacing the um, the propellers. And a little gel here. Okay, so what's next? Let's have a look at the um, the charging um, hub. So I'm gonna put this on the side here. So the charging hub. Um, it's it looks very nice. It have this um, little bit of a bumpy texture to it. Uh, it feels sturdy. Um, I don't think there's any problem. I mean, it's simple in in design. There's not much going on here your LEDs to indicate the battery level. When you charge it, it will always start to charge the battery from the battery that has the most charge left in it, just to get you up and up in the air as soon as possible so you can enjoy your experience. And then it will, um, um, then we will just move to the next battery and the next until it's fully done. And they all indicate their LEDs in green um, continuously, um, um, uh, continuously on when they are charged. Now, so you got USB-C for the uh, connection in to charge the battery and out if you want to charge something else and use the charge left in the batteries for your remote maybe or maybe maybe just something else that you want to. So this is pretty pretty good, uh, pretty interesting um, uh, capability. So the batteries just come in, in and out, very easy, they're very lightweight, they sit very well. I don't think there is risk of any damage while you're doing it and so on. And yeah, and then you can see a little bit of a uh, one, two, three, maybe eight, seven pin connection down the bottom to get that um, to get that going. So yeah, very sturdy, very cool. It's a made of hard plastic to notice. So if you crack it, I believe it will be really difficult to um, to get it fixed, to get it glued together, and so on. But I also don't believe that that would be uh, that would be the case anywhere because you're not doing much with the just the charging hub. Now, this is the the remote. Uh, again, it has similar texture to the docking, to, to the battery hub. Um, it has this bumpy texture, very sturdy, very hard plastic. It uh, feels good in the hand. I'm a gamer, gamer, so for me this feels like a little bit of like a Steam Deck controller. Um, it has a really good grips, really good layout, buttons easily reachable, and I think there shouldn't be any problem. Maybe just first observation here is that you know, while you're looking at the screen and flying, you may be covering portion of the screen with your with your thumbs. And then that could be a little bit annoying or maybe you can accidentally press something because it's a touch screen. But that's for me to find out. And I, I'll let you know in the description if, uh, if that's something that I felt that I was uncomfortable, I was worried about or in any way affected my flight experience. So yeah, so what we have here, we have uh, antennas, they unfold, um, important to keep them always facing the direction of where your drone is. You don't want to lose connection. Um, you know, they 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 adjustable, they very nice. I, you know, that it just feels like it's been very well made here on this particular part. Then you have the the, the controllers here. Um, they sit at the back of the remote controller and that is a little bit of a rubberized area. So if you take them out and put them back in, um, I don't think you're gonna be losing it. As long as you just put it right in, that is not going anywhere. I even if you just hold your drone and walk it along the street, that is not gonna come out. So it's really convenient, really cool place to have them. While I'm on the back, there are customers, um, you, there are buttons that you can customize. And apparently there is a fan that you can hear it when you first uh, switch on the remote or just maybe during a flight and so on. Um, so yeah. The, Good to know that there is a fan. Yeah? I mean, if you don't want your uh, remote to overheat, so if you can keep it cooled and then give you the, the dive feed while you're flying, uh, the, you know, the smoothest experience with zero lag and so on. I mean, I'm not complaining, even if I would be hitting the fan uh, at all um, um, during my flight. So these are the, the little sticks. So you just gently screw them in. Let me see if that actually is as easy. Uh, oh, okay. Let me put one down and let's see. Uh, is there a difference? No. Okay, it sits. 
so that's really cool um very small screw so it's like as you can see just the first one was a little bit difficult to align okay wow that's really cool a bit pointy i mean it has its purpose to be pointy you don't want the the stick to accidentally come off your hand and then you know if you creating a cinematic video or even if you're recording anything you don't want rapidly you know for the drone to rapidly lose control and stop and give you all this um not very smooth experience and so on so that's pretty cool okay now some buttons they're very clicky uh they're very clicky the screen uh very glossy very shiny i don't know if that's gonna be a problem when you're flying outside and um uh, and you know you you're gonna have a lot of reflections maybe if you look directly at the screen that may not be a problem but i don't know for all my devices with a with a touch screen i always get a a mat a screen protector to diffuse some of that glossiness and also not to scratch it so maybe that's something i'm going to be doing in the future but at first i need to learn how to fly it learn all the features and so on uh, okay, cool. So um, next one. So we have a couple of buttons here. So this is, I guess, the recording video and the taking picture and some of the little wheels here to adjust maybe ISO or zoom and so on. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely no clue. Uh, you know, I just spontaneously sat down and decided to do this video. And then the memory card and the USB-C. So memory card, apparently, if you want to transfer the videos or the content directly of the drone into your remote, but the drone itself should have a SD card slot as well. Okay, so I think that's about it about the uh, the remote control controller. It's really good and um, good weight, not too heavy. Just feels the right um, the right weight. Um, it handles really well. I've got small hands, so you know I feel very comfortable. For the bigger hands, I'm not sure you may get a little bit of aches in your in your in your wrists later on when you may be using it for too long and so on depending on how long you're gonna fly it but really cool i mean i'm super excited this is top-notch quality for the for the price point that you get i would expect nothing less than this uh, okay so let me move that on the side and then lastly the drone uh, again similar observation observation the texture and the plastic very much like the remote and the uh, and the, and the controller it has a little bit of a texture to it as well it's well packed well protected still a little bit of a sticker left here and um, it holds the the arms and the propellers in place uh, with that band here and yeah very tiny i mean look at that that is maybe i would say the same size as my hand and uh, that is unbelievably how small the technology gets and you know and how much you can put inside really really cool uh, i mean can you put it in your pocket doubt i doubt it i mean you still have to take your remote yeah so i doubt you it's just that much portable but having it in a in a fly fly more combo case um definitely makes sense and, and it should be just fine to travel with it even as an additional bag so okay so let's take this off that's a soft rubber uh, that holds everything in place really easy to take it off um yeah i'm just gonna put it on the side so what we have here um oh wow okay so another observation is oh what i'm doing here so oh how do you get those out okay just flopping around so another observation is that these are very thin extremely thin blades those prepares are i would not expect them to be this fragile I would say, but hey, DJI made these drones and been making them for a reason. I, I, to be honest with you, while watching other YouTubers, I haven't had anyone complaining about them to snap me there, unless you um, hit something and so on. So I wouldn't be worried. But it's just the, 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 the thickness of this isn't much. And just first observation is that can this actually fly? Um, and can you do it safely? I guess you can. So what else we have here? Event. Um, this drone doesn't have a air vent inside. Uh, sorry, it has an air vent inside, but it doesn't have a fan. So if you hovering over in one place, it may overheat. If you turn it on and leave it on the desk, it may overheat as well. When you fly, absolutely no problem. There is, a, if you take the protection for the gimbal, there you go, take that gently out. I took the, some of the protection that was here. But if you, when you fly, 
you can see that there is this um, air intake here. So when you fly, um, the, the, the air flies through the components, through the battery, through all the electronics, and then potentially comes out through here. So it keeps it nice and uh, nice and cool. So let's look at the gimbal now. And wow, that is smooth. Uh, does it have 360? No, it doesn't. I think it's about 180 maybe, maybe less, but it's very smooth. Um, you have this uh, stabilization here. I don't know if you can see over there. So you, while you fly, while you fly, whether you have any turbulences or anything, just to keep your video smooth, um, it has that little stabilization in the arms and so on. And the camera can move vertically and horizontally. You can change the um, the cover here. I don't know what they call it, but you can put the ND filters and replace it. So depending on on the weather, on the sun conditions, if you want to make you know we want to capture uh, you know less exposed video, then you you use those ND filters. But yet again, I exactly don't know what they do. And for me, it's to try them out, learn, and get the most of 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 my drone as much as possible. Uh, so, but that is really cool really cool very small i can't believe that camera and drone as small as this can capture such amazing videos as you can see on other youtubers videos now these are the fisheye lenses for the omnidirectional flight like i said if you are doing tracking and you have that obstacle avoidance and there's a tree in front you can either set it to avoid it stop or you can control it yourself but that should help you to to detect it because when you're flying, when you're looking at your camera straight and you're moving to the side, you're potentially not seeing what's there. And you know, you know, you know, you're not making direct contact with your with your drone as well. Um, so that will give you an indication on the screen that you know there's an obstacle on the side, be careful or stop and so on, and maybe just have a look at the drone quickly where you are. Make sure you're not fighting, you're not hitting anything. Um, what else here? We have the USB C and the card. A memory card slot so everything can be stored directly on the drone but you can get the live feed um, on the remote and then some of the sensors i guess these are for when you are uh, taking off and flying and measuring the, the distance from the ground initially and then and a flashlight either when you land or when you're in a in the air you know during the during the night or evening is dark you don't know what your drone is you just want to make sure that it's visible and so on and then we have the c0 category that and uh, this drone has received uh, before the end of 2023. Now, there is a way of declassifying it, but I believe you need to be in EU to do so. And then that would put it in the legacy drone. So meaning, I think the only thing that it means that you can fly this drone or set the limit to 500 meters altitude. Uh, but um, pretty much anywhere in the world, the, um, the restriction says that you should not be flying higher than 120 meters. If you ever need that, if you ever in a, in a, you know, in an area then where what doesn't really matter, you know, 500 meters can absolutely be something um, useful and so on. And then what else? We have the battery. So let me unfold this. Um, how do we unfold that? Um, ah, there you go. So that goes down and up. I guess this one is yeah, absolutely the same. And then, oh, okay, I'm a bit worried. I mean, you know, it's stable plastic, but you don't know what to expect when you're unfolding it. I mean, it doesn't look, like it's anywhere, um, you know, weak in design, but you never know. Yeah, you're doing it for the first time. Just do it carefully until you learn how to un un unfold it. Um, so, uh, what we have here? Oh, okay. So I see cables here. So there's a cable here and a cable here. So they are quite exposed. I don't know whether they the coating is waterproof or you know whether it's humidity proof and so on i do believe that you should not be using this drone in a condition when it's raining or where it's misty because the components can get wet and then when the humidity um, um you know uh, gathers on the electronic components the rust and the short circuit are very likely to happen so and even if you do so take it home dry it maybe put a fan next to it keep it and keep it as dry as possible and make sure it's completely dry before your next flight and before you put it away very important. I mean, for the price of this drone, which all this that I have on the desk comes in nearly 1100 or nearly 1200 uh, pounds, that is a costly uh, gadget um, to break immediately and so on. So just take very much a lot of care um, when um, dealing with it. And then the battery, I'm going to take the battery. So very lightweight. I mean, this drone weighs nearly nothing. I don't know if you can see 
So you can see, can you see my desk through there? So there's a little bit of an electronics and then you can see the desk through. So like I said, if there is a airflow, then it's you know coming through the whole battery, the whole components inside and cooling everything down. Um, and yeah, and then there is no fun in here. Okay, cool. So I like it. Now, so I was, um, I was reviewing here um, for the quality, all the plastics, very sturdy. They have very cool texture to it. So it's very grippy. They won't slip when you hold it. Now, when you break something, because I think it's a um, hard plastic, it won't be easy to glue it back together if you snap something. And I'm sure if you snapped it, you'll damage more and so on. So just be careful with that. The quality is amazing. The lightweight is unbelievable. The number of cameras and gadgets. And when you look inside, there's nothing really inside. It's very surprising that this small and mighty drone um, can handle so much uh, futuristic technology and help you with your flight experience, with your avoidance, with your tracking and making still really good quality videos and pictures. And, uh, and also, how does it even possible that it can um, you know, fly in the air and you know, in a quite windy conditions, they say, up to, I think it was like up to 20 miles an hour wind. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Uh, how it can resist. So the motors could be, probably are very strong and so on. And the stabilization and all the, the processing power, it just makes sure that it, you know, try to come back to, to the place where it, it was left, even if you're uh, experiencing some turbulences. Yeah, but that is, that is really cool. I mean, I am super excited. I can't wait to turn it on for the first time, go through my configurations and uh, take the first flight. Um, I don't know how to fly a drone, so I'm gonna be super cautious about it, make sure I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna crash it. I'm definitely gonna do my operator and flight ID before I, um, before I start attempt any sort of flying and make sure I take it seriously. If someone approaches me and say, hey, should you be flying here or do you have all the documentation that allows you for using a drone in the, in the areas where you are, then I wanna be ready. So flyer ID, operator ID, I'm gonna do even the online test, it's free. And I don't see why I shouldn't be getting myself familiarized with all the rules and everything that I should know. And then read some C, I think CAA and EASA information about where, how, and uh, you know how to safely fly a drone and so on. And then maybe insurance, maybe I'll, I'll get an insurance just in case something happens or if I, or if I um, cause a harm to someone else. Um, yeah, and so what I would suggest last thing, or not suggest because I don't even know yet, but if you're getting this piece of technology, whether this one or the more expensive ones from DJI, I've looked that they have insurance as well. So it's like a replacement part if something happens between 100 to 200 pounds, is it worth it? I mean, if you're spending already 11 to 1200 pounds and you're adding another 100 quid, you know, it's still a lot of money nowadays, but if something happens, I believe you can just send it back, get it fixed, even if it's the same drone, um, just with the six fixed part, it's still worth it. I don't think you would be able to fix it yourself in many occasions if something is badly damaged, uh, but, uh, but you know, something to think of. And then what we have here is this one is the suggested by the DJI uh, 128 gigabytes uh, Kingston um, memory card. So this is the micro memory card. It has a canvas here. Potentially there could be a, a trial for the canvas.com or maybe it has some features pre-installed on the camera when using it on the PC. But that's what is recommended, 128 gigabytes. I don't know how long is this gonna last for, but I'm sure that this amount of storage is quite significant. So I'm gonna be using this in my drone um, to fly with and capture all the recordings. And then we have the ND filters. Like I said, I have no clue what ND filters are. Prior to this video, I will be doing the research shortly and I'm definitely using it um, after I've learned what the drone can and can do and how it can do. But that, that yeah, like, look at that. That comes in a really, really cool tiny case. So you don't have a box, you just chuck it into your bag and you know that whatever is inside is not gonna get damaged. And then when we open that here, oh wow, that is super shiny. And these are the ND filters. So that's 256, 64 and 16. I believe this is for different intensity of the, the light, so for the controlling the exposure, but I'm only guessing here. Uh, yeah, but I'll let you know. I'll let you know what these do and whether it's difficult or easy to put them on as well and uh, how the whole experience is. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much everything from myself. Um, if you, I hope this video is useful. Um, I like, it's very, I, I believe it's very chaotic. I'm doing this for the first time. But if you think that there's anything useful or anything you got out of that video, 
um, give me a, a, a like and subscribe, uh, maybe even hit that um, uh, bell button and just um, stay tuned for, for other videos. Um, then in the next session, I'm gonna be doing the turning the remote and the drone for the first time, taking it for the setup, so I'll potentially record that and share that with you. And then later on, some flights and how I see this drone operating up in the air and whether it's difficult for someone who never ever tried a drone like this one before. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.